Welcome back to the Whatnots Reactor Core number 110. My name is Kyle Springer and I am joined by Ignacio Rojas. Ignacio, it's apparently very hot where you are. So hot that your fan isn't even working, which means it's about to be more, more hot. How are you holding Honestly, up? Honestly, <laughs> well, I'm barely holding up. Honestly, <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me if my fan... So I think the port is a problem and I wouldn't be well, surprised if it, the problem was that it got very overused interesting okay i yeah. see i see well hopefully things will cool Close. down a bit for you over there global warming's a bitch man right. also i have my my pc right next to me and that generates a lot of heat and it's for sure i have it for sure done here next to me and it's blowing upwards so well at least you are not completely right. covered head to toe in beskar steel because yeah. we are here to talk about The Mandalorian sure. Season 3, Part 1, uh, which for us, I, I guess, means the first half. We are going to be discussing <laughs> Episodes 1 through 4, uh, and then we will reconvene in about a month's time to discuss the second half of the show. It's only eight episodes. Is, is that right? Eight episodes? I, I think that's what I, it was, because I think that's what we had planned. I'm leaving um, all of the logistics to you, so you should if know. only... We had the technology to like look up this information. Oh, Just man. what can you do? Only um, Star Wars. <laughs> not, not really. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> Star Wars, The Mandalorian, season three. We are halfway through it, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Ignacio, how are you feeling? What, what is this? Uh, is this one doing it for you? Are you enjoying it? Are you just kind of meh? How you? How are you feeling? Uh, man, it should tell you something that, first of all, when it released, episode one of, of season three released, I was taken by, by surprise because I didn't know it mm. was releasing that soon. And then I watched that first episode at some point. And then mm -hmm. uh, two days ago, I watched episode two and three. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so that, that should tell you something. Uh, that's that I ironically that's kind of what I did I watched that first one like that it, like a couple days after it released and then I waited to watch the next ones until this week um, yeah but uh, I, mean, I, I, my thing I is that enjoy, enjoying it though yeah I mean it is enjoyable my thing oh, is sure. that I'm having a hard time finding the the drive to watch it, the passion to watch it. Mm. I, it, it is fine. It, I, I, I'm saying a lot of it, and, uh, but the thing is, I don't know where the story is going or what, what's supposed, what is it telling, Kyle? What story is it telling? Because Here's we already had, we already had the, the adventure of season one that was all of, hey, there's this mystery about Grogu. What, what's his deal? There's this Mandalorian. Eight episodes. Go for it. Yeah. The second, the second season, if I'm not mistaken, that's Moth Moth Gideon. Mon Mon Gideon Moth. Mon Moth like Yeah. Mothman. Yeah. I think that <laughs> was season two. Prophecies. <laughs> that was season two. It had that. It had a Ahsoka. It had the introduction of the of the Mandalorians for Rebels. Sure. But now, why are we here? What's the point? Mm, interesting. At, at the end of all this, what, what is the point? Not seeing the big picture. There's okay. no, I feel like there's no real drive so far in these episodes. Interesting. There's nothing that they're looking for. There's nothing they're fighting for. They are just there. And that's that to me is giving me a harder time to watch the episode. Episode three... If I'm not mistaken, it was three where we go back to Coruscant. Mm -hmm. That one gave me a little bit more of of excitement in a way, seeing this new phase of of what's happening. We saw what are the ramifications? Yeah, season, what are the yeah. ramifications of the Empire's gone? We have to start anew. How that looks, how that looks like. I like that. I like the angle of the scientists sure. coming in from, from the ex-Empire now having to be a part of a new Republic. I liked all of that. But everything else, it has been a lot of what are we doing? Why are we I gotcha. here? Okay. 
so I I disagree with you, but I think I Jeez. understand why you're sit you're like you're feeling that way, and I think it's because it's doing something very specific. Um, the the, the way I have seen like the growth or the trajectory of this show is that season one was kind of an experiment to see if see, even something like this would work. Um, and it is, you know, it was John Favreau uh, coming in with Dave Filoni, who does all of the cartoons kind of working together to be like, Hey, can we make a TV show that is kind of like the cartoons but in live action. Um, and season one very much picked up some of the plot threads or started to like hinted at them. Um, and then it wasn't until the success of season one, that massive, just like, oh my God, I think we have a hit here. Um, that in season two, it didn't take the episodic approach that season one did, where it was like, here's a little, little small st story about a town and he meets the sheriff and he has to go help him with that thing. Or here's their version of seven samurai and, you know, and they have to help the town. Like, it's not that episodic thing. It was more like, OK, we, we have a little bit of story to work with here. There's all this stuff about the dark saber, uh, which they are heading up, which is pulling on plot <laughs> threads from the cartoons. Um, and so, yeah, if if you haven't seen those cartoons, some of that stuff might be a little lost on on you. But I think what's happening now in season three is we are starting to either see Mandalore get rebuilt uh, or Death Watch be redeemed, uh, which uh, either one is interesting, right? They are they seem to be like building up a, a new community of, of Mandalorians. Um, and and then, like you said, yeah, in episode three, we get to see I, I don't remember uh, the character's name, but that scientist who we saw way back in season one, he is now trying to get uh, reacclimated into the New Republic. Uh, but he's working on cloning, um, which is the interesting thing here. He he was working on cloning for the Empire. Uh, and as we know from the newer tr trilogy, that's kind of the thing that they did with the emperor. They they cloned him. Um, and so I, I think I think this show is starting to explore like, well, how, how did that come to be? How how did they get this cloning process? How did they do all of that? Because um, we know that cloning exists within Star Wars. And the cartoon also mentions that that's not the only way to clone someone. And the method that they were using to get all those clone troopers, the DNA sample was actually starting to, deg to degrade. Um, well, they, they kind of touch upon that in that episode where, where the doctor directly references Camino and right? how the, the technique that he uses is different and better than what they use. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so it's it's yeah, yeah I, I like the aspects of like, well, yeah, how how does someone get uh, like if they defect from the empire to the new republic or I guess now the empire is dead, 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 dead. So how do you get, you know, reacclimated into society? I like that stuff. I think that's interesting because it's not focusing on the Skywalker story. Um there's 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 a lot of space for them to play, but yeah. it is slow. I think this show, like because of the massive success of this show, it is taking its sweet ass time to like yeah. build up stuff, which I'm I'm OK with. But yes, I can see why for, for some it might be just like, I really don't know where this is going. It's just, like it just seems to be inching along. Um, but how the thing the thing is to me is that you brought up how oh they they could be setting up the rebuild of Mandalore or the other thing from that you mentioned Death Watch yeah from from yeah that that what that but my thing is that we are already halfway through the season and what you are saying are possibilities not 
necessarily here's, where they are going. Right. Here's, but here's also what I'm g- 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 getting at. These stories might not be wrapped up by the end of this season. I think they're starting to now play the long g- 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 game of, hey, we have a massive hit. This is going to go on for multiple more seasons. So we can start to do these plots a little bit slower and be a little more intricate and more have more detail. Um, but my problem there is that even if that's the case, then you are four episodes deep and you are going without a plot. You are moving without a plot. Well, it, it, it has that a plot. Might, they, it's not without I mean, a plot. What's though. the plot? What's the overall plot of this season? Right now? We're halfway the, it, through. They seem to be rebuilding Mandalore and they are Why? looking into the current. Why are you saying that? The, the only no the the, group the only thing that happened Death Watch him the, the he he has his own foundling Bo-Katan yeah. is now there she's now j- joined uh and even in the the one we got uh t- today like they bring those baby b- 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 birds back we got three more foundlings yeah. like they are they are building up their strength work, their their community their influence like they they are but doing I know- something there. At no point that have they expressed that they want to rebuild Mandalore. Sure. And it, it might not be yeah. that they are like, we are going to rebuild Mandalore, which is why I, I also said it could be the redemption of Death Watch. Because Death Watch was a terrorist organization uh, back in the cartoon. So to see our hero be a descendant of that and basically be in, in the, the same like religious creed that they were in is interesting uh that he's they not, are not seen as a villain uh of of the show but they are not not doing any push towards that you say that oh th- this ca- can be the redemption arc but at no point do they make any reference that that's what they want they I, just I, they're I don't just think there. They need to spell it out explicitly. I, I think this is just what's happening naturally. This seems to be the case. Now, I c- could be wrong, right? We haven't seen yeah. the rest of, of, of this. So we don't know exactly. But um, we're already halfway through the season and we do not know what. And there's going to be seasons this after season that. about. But what is this season about? Like I've been saying, it's we're just, just going. going. In circles. <laughs> no, but that's my problem. The. The show, this season so far, is just them doing stuff, not them doing stuff for something. Sure, you could argue that there was a, one of the driving forces was that Dean, Jean, Dean, Dean, Dean yeah. wanted to redeem himself. Sure, yeah. But that that's already resolved and he's non-different. You, but you're, you're like you are. I, it, it feels like you're looking at the immediate situ- situation and C- not Cal, looking at. We're the halfway picture. through the season. <laughs> halfway yes, through the you season. Don't have to it's end not immediate. At the end of the season, you can do a, an, an arc, a storyline that takes place over multiple seasons. Then what's the point what of the season? G- 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 that said, I will also say that season one and two was just as slow. Um, and like the, the, no, the meat uh, of what we, we got in e- each of those is actually pretty small, um, like sh- stretched out o- over six to eight e- e- episodes. Um, no, I- I'll give you that season one had the laws at the middle where it was mm-hmm. very much, uh, this is the villain of the week. This is the situation of the week, but there was still an overall thing of. Episode one, they set up that, hey, Mando now has Grogu, this creature that we know nothing about who has the force, and he has to protect it because people want want him. Sure, yeah. And that was the driving force for the whole season. Set up episode one. Season two, we had Moth Gideon as a driving force opposite to them throughout the whole season. Mm-hmm. We are in season three. And we're halfway through the season, and the most plot that you could argue that has happened is that 
Dean wanted redemption. Sure. But there is that was resolved in one episode. And that's it. All the For other things personally. have been Yeah, but we they have not made any I, I, I feel any like effort to Bo Katan is scheming, right? She is she has like an, an actual like rightful claim to the throne of man the Mandalore, especially if she has the dark's hair. That is their their symbol of power. But is she um, scheming? That Remember I, that she might be the first the first two episodes that we saw her, she was just sitting in the throne, not doing anything. Are you sure that she's scheming? Because she I, was I sitting in the she... throne doing nothing. She was pushed by Jean to help him. And due to circumstances, now she finds herself with the Death Watch. Yeah, and I, I, is I she think scheming? she is... I, she's, I think she's scheming something. I don't know what that is yet. Is uh, she scheming something? It, it could be a hostile I think she's takeover. only figuring it out as she goes. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. She's 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 starting to to think and put a plan to get together. That's what scheming is. Um, and she is seeing this as an opportunity to, uh, like I said, like rebuild Mandalore or uh, d d do a hostile t takeover of the d d d Death Watch or to ha like somehow influence Death Watch to like essentially redeem them that might not be her plan but that might be essentially what happens for death watch um, but those are there. possibilities without foundation i they, don't think so it's based could, off the Cal, stuff we've seen here no because from what we've seen she could very well a do as you say as you say and she wants to take back mandalore b she could just next episode be done with it be done with the creed and sure. go her separate way See, mm -hmm. she could just live with live with them in peace, credits roll, and whatever. Absolutely. See, I those don't are possibilities. You there. Those are not actual things that are going to happen. I agree. It with could you. happen. Hundred percent, hundred thousand percent. And that's my times thing. infinity. Kyle, that's my thing. We are halfway through the season. And there's nothing <laughs> yeah, I know. Say that <laughs> Then why are we discussing? We it, agree when, with when, it. When you're halfway through a movie, do you know what the ending w will be? No, but I know what the exactly. plot is. For any, I know what the plot is. I know why they're doing things. But sometimes in movies or shows, even halfway through, you don't know how everything comes together. Yeah, it's yet. not about how how it will end up. It is. You should. The structure should be that at the beginning y you should set up what is going to happen That's throughout the one structure whole. and it's a very simplified one. There but you don't figure out what you want to do stories and narrative. But, but you don't figure out what you wanna, want to want to the story to be that you want to t tell halfway through it or to three fourths through it. It could be it could be planting seeds that you don't realize are as important as they are. And then something happens down the road and you're like, oh, shit, they were planning this all along. That happens in so many shows and and and, and things. But let's move on. Um, Grogu, let's t talk about him. He's starting to uh, I mean, I, I don't want to say come into his own, right? But we we did get yeah. a little bit more of a look into his backstory. Uh, he's starting to be a little more confident with his powers and use them. Uh, how, how do you feel about how he has progressed so far? Uh, I like how he has progressed, but there's only so much that he can progress. Knowing that... He is what fifty years old, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere around mm -hmm. that, and that he is gonna keep being a baby for many more years to come. So there's only so much growth you can give a baby. Sure, yeah. Um, and so that that's I, one of the limiting factor. But I think that yeah, they have been doing some growth with Grogu being more into his powers. You see him it, well. In this latest episode with the training, how by the end of it he was jumping around and taking the shot. Yeah, but you, you will feel... not see a Grogu that will that will suit up 
and fight alongside Dean. That's that's almost what I was about to ask. Do you feel like in later seasons of this show they might do a time skip of of like? I mean, it has to be a huge time skip. Yeah, be it'd be after, they have all, after yeah, the but, new tr- trilogy. But the problem with that is that then Jane can no longer be there. I mean, he 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 can. He'd just be older. Oh well, you you think that our eighty year old Mandalorian is still gonna kick ass? Why not? He's a fucking Mandalorian. <laughs> Fine, hundred years old. <laughs> yeah, he'd be out there with his k- k- cane that also is a shotgun and everything. It'll be great. Um, no, I I don't know if that's something they would do or not because I like I I I kind of I I like the idea of seeing a character like Grogu, like this almost like coming of age story right but it's also baby yoda right like he is the the yeah. cute little thing like i don't think they necessarily want to get away with that unless they can yeah. if if they feel like it is just as strong if not stronger than all the different v- versions of g- g- of group that we've gotten right we've got the big group baby group teenage group right um like I, I feel like they're probably gonna skip with that. So yeah, I, I, I don't think we'll see him suit up, but I think we will see him be a lot more confident in his yeah. powers, um, and stuff like that. I, I, I did like the little bit of backstory that we got. We got to see him a little bit more in Order sixty six. Um, I don't. It was Kelleron was the name of. The dude, right? That the the, oh, the Jedi the that, that was this, yeah. driving him around. I don't remember uh, how to p- pronounce his name. Uh, that guy was played by uh, the voice actor for Jar Jar Binks, uh, yeah. which is in, in, interesting. Um, but yeah, I I kind of, to be honest, don't want too much more backstory of him. I kind of like him being this mystery. Um, but that is also another thing I've seen floating around is, is, is like, hey, what if Grogu actually is a clone since they are also coming up with the like th- this theme of cloning in this sh- show? Right. Um, that could be something we learn down down the road, um, which would be interesting because we know that species is super rare. We only knew of Yoda and Yaddle. And that was it. Now we have Grogu. Um, but I, yeah, what? I don't know. I, Who knows? Maybe it is a kid. Maybe. maybe well, they, I, I don't think they were in a relationship is the thing. But hey, you never know. Maybe Yoda uh, fucks. Maybe he fucks. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, who knows? I, I, I do want to see him. I, 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 I think I'm, I'm also interested in the struggle between him learning this like Mandalorian creed versus his like force powers. And if there will be a struggle there, I know Ahsoka is no longer a Jedi, but I, like, I'm, I'm wondering if there will be some kind of tension between, between like, do I want to be a Jedi when I grow up? Is that something that I can do? Or uh, is it like, do I need to become a Mandalorian who also is a force wielder um yeah but then you keep going back to what we just talked about how they are backed into a corner with with the fact that he cannot grow up that much Mm -hmm. for as long as you keep dean in the show baby yoda will have to be a baby yeah because of what they have already established and I don't we know can still how see much him like lash out, right? Like I, I, I think he's starting. I mean, he's fifty years old. Old. Hopefully, he knows the difference between right and wrong. The, and again, he was picking up the the little one dude, and he's like, "No, squeezy, bad baby." Uh, I don't know. Kind of he wipe his own ass. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, his yeah. arms might be a little too short. <laughs> yeah. And so I don't know how much you can. I mean, well, yeah, you you saw him with Luke, how he he made that decision, but I think that that was such a simple thing of hey, choose. I'm giving you the choice, choose Jedi or choose Mandalorian. And Luke 
seeing in him that he misses Dean. I think that that's simple enough that you can make it believable with a toddler, but then to actually expound on that and have there be a dilemma of, hey, could I be a Jedi if I wanted to and stuff like that? I mean, I don't I, know if they, how far they can go with a baby. I, I like it. Speaking of it, he cannot Grogu speak. being a baby, yeah. Um, that it like. I, I think more like baby behavior. That's a weird way to put that. But like sometimes babies don't like the decisions their parents make for, for, for them, right? Um, or I like I, they 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 might play with that age thing a little a little bit there, and like maybe mando makes a certain decision or is in the middle of something and Gro grogu disagrees with it there has to be some way he can like express his distaste for what he's about to do um and that could be some interesting conflict too of of he like din thinks he's making the right move right decision and grogu's just like hell no are you kidding me who knows? I don't know. Yeah, but then going back to the discussion that we just had, we're halfway through the season. Can they really sell that kind of of story? I, I, again, I'm 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 talking in the in like long long term with this stuff that they can explore down the road, not with like next Kyle, week on the Mandalorian. Now it's season three, Kyle. We're here. I'm tr trying We're to look the at the future. bigger We're picture here. and see all the pieces in play <laughs> and trying to connect the dots. Ah, your lack of faith is disturbing. <laughs> That's all I have to say. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I'm enjoying this so far. I like the dog fights that we've gotten in space on the ship. Yeah, I like the monsters kind of we cool. got. Um, man, that one the, in the one we got today, day when the, the the big old dragon bird thing is flying off and he's in that ship chasing it like into the this hun oh it looks so good i was just like man this is this is fun i like i yeah. i'm enjoying this um yeah i i i am having a blast so far i, I hope we get more more big monsters more cool battles um yeah, I'm I'm excited. I'm excited. Do you have any other kind of things that you want to mention or point out or things that we missed um from episodes 1 through 4 here? No, the only thing that stands out to me was the 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 plot point that we had with the scientist. Yeah. But unfortunately, so I like the whole dilemma of Hey, I'm a scientist. I'm here to do science. I was drafted into the Empire. It wasn't what I wanted, but I wanted to do my science. And I'm glad that I can do my science, but for good this time. I liked where they were going with that, but I'm not so sure about the how they ended that. I felt like that having... He, I, he I didn't feel really like go into the that. dark side. He didn't do necessarily go into the dark side, quote unquote. But I, but I, I wasn't a big of a fan of having that turn of, hey, if the if the New Republic doesn't want to fund your stuff, we can make our way through the trains. We can be very sneaky, sneak into a empire thing, empire. What they're called? Uh, are those Star Destroyers? Sure. Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah we can sneak into know. that. <laughs> I don't know. It rubbed me the wrong way how they it's... were. I like I like the redemption story of hey, we were from we were with the Empire, but now I want to do actually good with my science. But then it felt like they are kind of pushing him to go back into the. Well, fuck the New Republic. I'm going to do my own thing. Well, that's the thing is the New Republic then turns into the First Order. So I I, I, I feel like his character and his story arc is going to be either a tragic one or one where he just goes full on bad guy. 
because I, 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 I hope it's a, tr- a, tr- a tragic one. Like, I, I, I hope that he is like really genuinely like, I just want to do this science and I want to help people. And so when he gets out of the empire and is now here in the new Republic and sees the new Republic, like just being real shitty and still trying to weaponize his research. Um, like I, 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 feel like that is such a tragic arc and the 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 emotional toil that that puts him through and the decisions he'll have to make with that of if he does continue with his research or seeing someone else take the mantle of that re- research and go elsewhere with it um yeah i like i i wouldn't be surprised if we end up going that route and don't truly look at the like well let's look at the rehabilitation process uh if we do all of that or like i said i could also just see him just being like you know what screw it if you're all the bad guys then so am i and he's just like i'm gonna do the most vile stuff with this and yeah i'll clone your emperor why not why yeah um but yeah, I yeah, I I really enjoy, enjoyed that too. I, I I do hope we return to that um and and see what happens a little bit more. But yeah, that's all I have for the first half of the Mandalorian. Um so yeah, I guess that wraps us up for our reaction discussion of part 1 of season 3 of the Mandalorian. Ignacio, where can the people find you on the interwebs? They can find me on Twitter at IgnazRojasV. That's I-G-N-A-C-I-O-R-O-J-A-S-V. Go. Um, you guys can find me at Yo Kyle Springer. And if you would like to stay up to date with all of the stuff that we do here at The Whatnots, we are at The Whatnots on Twitter. So please go like, share, and subscribe. That would help us out a ton. If you're watching the YouTube version of this, we'll put some other videos right over there. We just did a Shazam Fury of the Gods spoiler cast as well. Uh, So maybe go check that one out. But yeah, this has been number 110 of the Whatnots Reactor Core. We will see you all next time. Bye. Bye.